right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining me here on Adobe Live, Behance, Creative Cloud, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter Periscope. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Evangelist for Adobe, and we are here this week uh, between 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we a live stream event in lieu of the NAB conference. Uh, of course, none of us could be there this year because of all the things going on in the world, but we wanted to bring you something a little different, a little special, and still showcase to you some of the great new features that we just brought to the digital video and audio applications. So all new updates across Premiere, After Effects, Audition, uh, Character Animator yesterday. And we've got product team members, we've got amazing customers, lots of really amazing things to show you here. And of course, we have live interactive chats happening all over the web. So really, we want to drive you to bring the conversation to Adobe Live. So that's behance.net slash Adobe Live. Also, you can ask questions in uh, the Premiere Pro Facebook channel as well. And I'll be monitoring Twitter and, uh, and all the other uh, avenues as well to bring those questions to our guests. So just a real quick uh, schedule showcase here. So coming up with me in just a moment, we have my colleague Dacia Science. We're going to be talking about uh, creative tools in Premiere Pro, specifically around graphics workflows. And we're going to show a little bit of After Effects as well and actually get into some pretty intense uh, After Effects um, expression use for text, animated text, and Mogurt creation. And then at 10.30 Pacific time, we've got Eric Demusi, who's going to be talking about how he did his budget indie feature film with 400 VFX shots. This is one of those sessions. It's, it's pretty darn mind-blowing to see the kind of work that he did with a very small crew, very inspirational, and it's exactly the kind of thing that uh, I think will make many of you just want to go. And if you're not already, already using After Effects or shooting movies, you're going to want to do this. You're to try some of the techniques it's going to show you. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. My first guest is a good friend of mine. She is part of the motion graphics um, quality engineering team. She's been at Adobe for a long time. You've met her and you've seen her at Adobe uh, at uh, NAB before. It is my good friend and colleague, Dacia Science. How are you doing, Dacia? Hi, Jason. I'm great. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to Doing my well? home office. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, and I left my lower third on there for a second. Sorry about that. So, well, it's so lovely to have you here. And, uh, you know, again, here we are kind of all in our remote locations doing this, uh, this special presentation. And I was just kind of teeing it up. We're going to be talking a lot about motion graphics in Premiere, but really you're going to kind of deep dive into Mogurts. And I thought maybe we could start by just kind of having you give an explanation to everybody of really what what is a Mogurt? You know, we use this a lot internally. We've also had a lot of funny like <laughs> memes and things created around Mogurt because that's that's actually just the file extension, right? M-O-G-R-T. Maybe you could give kind of a brief explanation of what it is and kind of how they're used. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, my favorite way to talk about motion graphics templates is uh, I have a great analogy. You know, you walk into Home Depot as a person that hasn't really maybe done a lot of renovations to your house. There's an overwhelming amount of tools and supplies and things, and uh, you're not really quite sure where to start. Uh, I think that a lot of people feel that way about walking into After Effects. They yeah. know that they can do a lot of powerful things with After Effects, uh, but we're figuring out where to start and what to do can be pretty intimidating. Um, and so I think that the most beautifully the motion graphics templates has done is create this bridge between people who have a lot of experience making them and can do a lot of really magical things with them, being able to sort of curate a set of tools that they can package up into a little capsule and shoot on over to you, a person who might not have as much experience where you are more comfortable in your environment. In Premiere, you can stay in your ecosystem. Right. You have this thing that you can use now where you have just a small toolkit where you can still change things and manipulate things and feel a little bit like a wizard, but you would never have to walk into After Effects, you know? So, um, so I think they have a lot of power in them. They can be as dynamic and uh, have as, as many different controls as possible where you can let someone really just take over or they can be as limited and uh, as, you know, basically designers, you know, a nod to designers they can really put a lot of guardrails up so that, you know, film editors who are not designers can't actually make something look terrible or choose colors that are conflicting, you know? So right. <laughs> they, they really just help, uh, 
you know, solidify the spectrum of, of what's possible. And uh, they're exciting. And actually, you just raised a really good point, because one of the things that I know I've talked a lot about in terms of trying to get people into the idea of using motion graphics templates is specifically when you're working with a design team, right? Or let's just say, you know, you might be in a very small production team, but you've got people who are kind of doing the look, the branding, the colors and all of these things. And these are really, I mean, all jokes aside, we, we, we make jokes about this even at NAB shows like, ah, the editor gets a hold of the graphics and changes the font and changes the kerning. But this is exactly it. You know, if you're designing the look and the brand, that needs to be consistent. So as, as the Mogurt creator, and you're going to show some of this in After Effects in a little bit. Yeah. You can you can minimize what the editor can change, and that's not or to minimize, minimize what you yeah, can change too. Like you know, exactly, if you're a exactly. Creator, and you create in a nice brand and look for and feel. You can have this thing that you can reuse over and over again in multiple ways. So that's the other thing. It's just such a good time saver. You know, in the old days, you know, you'd have to go back to After Effects even if you were doing it yourself. You accidentally spelled someone's name wrong, or you got their title wrong. You have right. to go back in, retype everything re-export, re-import, alt-replace. It's like there's no need for that anymore. You just drag your motion graphics template into your project. You can use the same lower third with the same design and uniquely uh, change the name or whatever you need to for those things. And they, they're they these little independent parcels of motion graphics that right. can really make your, your project shine. And I think that's kind of the cool thing, too, because, again, it's not even so much that you want to minimize what the editor can change. But, again, if I'm kind of in that process and I know I need to use a graphic or a lower third, I actually don't want to think about the things that I don't need to modify. Right. Right. I don't want to be concerned with is it the right color? Is it in the right position? Is it, you know, appropriately placed based on the... um, the frame size or aspect ratio. And that's when, I don't know if you're going to go into a little bit about uh, some of the responsive uh, tools that we have in Premiere for that. But yeah. this is exactly it. And I know that, you know, when I'm getting Mogurts that are created from others, it, that's the beauty. I actually say minimize as much as you can, you know. Uh, <laughs> we added yeah. the ability to change like fonts and styles, but uh, we don't know. I don't always want that. Sometimes I just want to drag it in, change the text if need be, and, and just keep moving. Exactly. And the cool thing is that you can also make them in Premiere. So we have a more lightweight version. I think that's where, where I'll start uh, before we deep dive into After Effects. Uh, I made something uh, really silly and fun. I don't know if we're sharing the screen yet. Yeah. So okay, I can go ahead and why don't we why don't we get into it here? Sorry, I've got uh, panel. So I did a pre-recording just because time and technology and all of those things. Uh, So I've got a little uh, time lapse here that I can. uh, We're not going to sit through the twelve minutes of it because (laughs) we don't have that much time. But I'm going to scrub through it. Um, But you know, a lot of people that I, I meet sometimes they're unaware that we have something called the essential graphics panel. And the thing is that it's it's a very multi-purpose panel. It's where you keep your Mogurts uh, stored. You can sort them by most recent. You can add keywords to them. Uh, you can link to uh, other folders. Um, there's lots that you can do, but you can also build your own Premiere Mogurts uh, within Premiere proper. So here, uh, I actually have a one of my favorite things in life. You know, I think we're all looking for a little bit of um, of, of relief and and a way to de stress. And and one of the ways that I do that is an Instagram account called uh, uh, Cats on Synthesizers in Space. So this oh is my, my homage to them. So um, so here I am. I'm building out a, a graphic a really basic flat design uh, synthesizer. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that I want to note that I'm doing here is I'm using reusing a lot of elements. Um, you know, you can duplicate layers. Actually, I'm going to pause it here too real quick just to point something out. So, you know, I'm duplicating a lot of layers. Uh, you can rename all of your layers just like you would. This layer stack works like a, any, any other uh, in Photoshop, in Illustrator, in AE, uh, really matches that design. Um, you know, reusing elements by duplicating the layers and then using your keyboard shortcuts to nudge things over. Uh, that was introduced, um, I believe, at last year's NAB. That's right. Yeah. That's yep. the things that can really help just keep um, keep you 
moving quicker so that if you know you want to nudge command with an arrow key add shift to nudge by 10, 10 pixels right. um you know also the snapping lines right the snapping lines inside of yeah. the, uh, yeah, and yeah, grid and guides yeah yeah and grids and guides are coming up here in a little bit uh but you know then we have this other ability we added the uh there it is uh you can change the uh the line caps on these so i'm going to change these to round caps so they look a little bit more like dials and then here pretty soon um i'm going to enable our uh, our grids and guides which you can do that as you can see here just use your button editor add them to your most commonly used buttons and enable them and pretty soon uh you know you can basically create as many guides as you want the other cool thing about this is that you can save these guides right. and, and they're uh, shareable and inside of After Effects. Them and share them and you can s import them into After Effects. So let's say you're working with a team of people or you yourself, you just have these certain dimensions that you want to make sure that you're always staying consistent with. You can share essentially like a Mogert file. Now we have a .guides file and that can be shared across teams, across uh, your computer systems, etc. So, uh, yeah, and, here and, I'm and just... And here, Dossi, before you move ahead. on to, I just want to emphasize also, because we're kind of blowing through this pretty quickly. This was huge, right, bringing this into Premiere, because this was kind of the fundamental piece that was... I mean, look, it was still V1 prior to this, right? So once you had guides yeah. and you had the ability to snap and really all of those keyboard shortcuts that you just mentioned, now it feels, in terms of design familiar to what people are used to in Photoshop, familiar with, to what people are used to in After Effects. And this After made it a, a place where you could, even as an editor who's not, like you said, maybe you have some intimidation going into After Effects, you can now create these things here with some confidence that things are positioned correctly. And it, again, it just it's familiar with the other apps that you're commonly using anyway. Absolutely. And, you know, we're not going to, you know, the Premiere uh, environment is never going to or is never meant to replace the uh, depth of, of tools that you're able to use in Illustrator or in Photoshop or After right. Effects. But sometimes you want to just sketch some things out. And I think that sometimes you just need some basic things. Uh, and, and so, yeah, we've added a lot of, of abilities to really help designers lay things out. So the other thing that I want to talk about, too, uh, is masking. And that's something that happens uh, by using just the shape layers themselves. So in this case, uh, I want to be able to mask. Basically, I, you know, I'm animating this, this in. And I want to be able to mask the tools uh, on the side, these knobs. As this animation is coming in, I don't want to be able to see them. So you just, I just basically built a shape. And then there's a little button down here. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to zoom in here. And you just under here under appearance, you just check mask with shape. You can invert. This is what I had to do in this case. And now suddenly the uh, everything that is within this group, all of these layers are going to be masked. And that's another thing that's really exciting about using this. Uh, I really zoom like into that real quickly so we can see. Yeah, that. yeah. 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 Zoom in a little more. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So basically, I put all of these knobs and sliders, I put them into groups. I like to stay organized. So I renamed everything. Uh, you can rename layers except for text layers because those just take the name of whatever text you have on. Uh, and then basically, that one shape that I drew, I created a mask, I inverted it, and now it's only going to affect everything inside of this group. So none of these other elements, anything outside of this group, uh, will not be affected by that mask. And, uh, and that's another, um, it's another way of just organizing your things. And you can create as many subgroups as you want. So infinitely create subgroups. And it's um, kind of crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at what you just did there, that that's built entirely in, I mean... <laughs> yeah. I'm actually looking at that going, can I build that? I, I guess. I mean, it's really. I'm a craft it's, designer, it's, but, you know, it's, it's right. Cool. It's just basic shapes, right? I mean. It's just basic shapes. Uh, the other thing that I like to mention that people sometimes don't know about is that you can start your keyframing in the EGP itself. So with your layer selected, let me zoom in here. Yeah, I'm going uh, to move the camera for a second here, so don't mind me. We have, am I in the right place? It doesn't no, I'm, right. I'm moving you. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> it 
it looks like I'm not zooming in to where I want to be zooming in on my screen. Let's see. Is it right? Yeah, go ahead and okay. zoom in. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay, cool. Sorry. This is live, uh, friends. We're, you know, this is... This we're, is not, we're figuring this out. So here's something scripted. cool. Each one of these little uh, icons that let you know position, anchor point, rotation, scale, and opacity are actually buttons that will start your keyframing process. So one thing that I like to do is well, the, the moment you activate it, you get a keyframe in the ECP no matter where you are. And so one of the things that I like to do is sort of what I like to call sketch out my animation in the EGP first. So I kind of, you know, I'm moving my CTI back and forth. And for those of you who are not super After Effects-y and animated, -y, these are keyframes. They basically say, I want this thing to move. At this time, I want it to be here, and then the next time, I want it to be in a different location. Um, and the ECP can get a little unwieldy. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, you know, there's a lot going on in it, and sometimes manipulating things in the ECP uh, is not as fun to me. So I, like I said, I like to sketch out my designs, uh, my animations uh, first in the EGP by using those keyframe toggle buttons. And then I go into the ECP and I start to uh, futz with the timing and the curves and the easing. Um, then, you know, I just will plug uh, for, you're gonna find out about this later in the week. There's something that is called the new Adobe Beta, Beta Prime program. And uh, if you sign up for that, you get to see and give feedback on new things that we're working on. And I would just, all I'll say is that wink, wink, there's something really exciting happening with Keith, with the ECP. That's all I'll say. Yeah. So, now, by, now, by the yeah. way, there's a couple of questions coming in and I um, I thought maybe yeah. if you can, you could probably show it. Also, maybe just also show some of the other options to bring content into essential graphics. So yeah. first one is, as you're showing this, you're talking about kind of laying out the design want to emphasize that people can also bring in, you can import, not only create shapes and text from it, but we have that new new item uh, button at the bottom right, right, of the essential graphics panel that'll let you right import there. JPEGs, it lets you import uh, movie files, it lets you import Photoshop files. Yeah. Um, so again, you have kind of this, this endless way to import content to begin kind of sketching things out. And then quite a few uh, questions here. I've got Keith Anderson asking about where these things live. And that's kind of another really great thing that we did with Mogert. So by default, of course, you can save it um, into your Essential Graphics local library, but you also have the option to uh, save you know, sort of externally so that you can Dropbox it, share it, email it, whatever you want. And then yeah. you just have that standalone .mogert. And then you also have my and our kind of choice option, which is to leverage CC libraries and save it to your own library or even a shared library. So kind of in this spirit of collaboration and working remotely, you're now my designer. Actually, yep. and I'm going to ask you, you must share with me cats on synthesizers and oh, that's I'm just like the most awesome. I actually, I actually, you know, I know you're a musician and yeah, this is going to need that. a soundtrack and I thought maybe you could throw <laughs> some glimpses on it. So I left, I left I that it. to you. Uh, I need but, it. But yes, but a shared to... library, right? So this way, I don't even have to think about it. You create a shared library, you drop it in there, I fire up Premiere and suddenly oh. it's cats on synths in space and it's ready to go. Exactly. So, it, and I actually like, as I'm versioning, like I like to save as I go. So basically you just right click on the tra the graphic item itself and it brings up this export as- yeah, Can we get you to zoom in on that too, please? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I'm learning to zoom. That's All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and so- here, you could save it to your local folder, or you could choose a different folder, or you can save it to one of your many libraries. I have a lot of libraries. Uh, you can also add keywords. So I like to add things like I added uh, an AB demo, and that makes it searchable later. Uh, that's going to export. Let me zoom out and just show. Now we're live in Premiere. And I'm actually going to cancel it because I've saved it like a lot of right. times. So we can see here. And now if I search NAB demo, uh, boom. Oh, I didn't put cats on this since that. Anyway, it's, well, it's right here. Yeah. Da, da, da. You can also filter by your libraries. You can also, this is a little known fact. You can manage additional folders and you can create a set, a subset of folders on a network drive, on an external drive, somewhere else. And essentially, it's just another way to organize. Right. Your, and you can favorite uh, as well, which was, I think, also added last year. as well, exactly, which I really love. 
So zooming through this, I just uh, so we want to be conscious in the time, and I do want to get to AE. Uh, I also just wanted to show how easy it is to use Adobe Stock. I got these really cool space shots from Adobe Stock, and then ultimately, the, you know, did a little something here, and then let's just get to the finale, which is let's just show what we made here and again jason this is gonna need some of your yeah your oh yeah but uh but yeah this is my shout out to my favorite instagram channel cats on synthesizers in space if i were making a documentary i would want to make it about them and be just for fun and uh this would be my opening title sequence for this, it <laughs> this could be the new the new the new tiger king you the cat the cats on synths queen that's that that's you know exactly yeah. Okay, so we only have like nine more minutes. Yeah, we we can go we can go another another nineteen ish. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got some space. We got some space. No, okay, cool. So, were you gonna now go into uh, some of the After Effects stuff or? Yeah, I was okay. thinking so. Okay, so there's a couple things in After Effects that I want to go into. Um, maybe I won't go through this. I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just gonna go into this. So, let's start in Premiere. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so, you know, one thing I've been noticing on channels like Freeform and Discovery is that they're adding little lower video into their lower thirds. So, this was actually uh, uh, an ad for the movie Solo. It was a little, you know, in-screen ad, like, tomorrow at 9 p.m., Solo was going to be show. So, this was the inspiration for that. And that's this little lower third here for a show that I call Pet Wars. Uh, <laughs> nice. It doesn't exist yet, but I think it should. Who are the cutest animals? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, this is a little lower third I built. And uh, one of the things, so this is the thing here on my collection. And if I just click on this, I can see that I've got some controls. So... You know, like we said, there are some things I can edit. Maybe we want to change the name of the show to Animals, and we want to say that it's on Friday. And maybe we want to make everything just a little bit bigger because we want it to be on screen. So we're giving a little bit more accessibility to everyone. Um, and now, you know, there we go. We've got this name, Animals. And notice that as I change the words, all of these bounding boxes and everything uh, dynamically shifted with the uh, when I change the words. And I'm going to get into that in After Effects in a second. Um, but I didn't, I kind of let, I put some hard coded values into that. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. And so the, the dynamicness of this has some limits. So you know, I love a movie called uh, Home Alone. Maybe you all have heard of it. And one of my favorite lines from it is the filthy animals. And if you notice here, uh, this suddenly breaks down, right? Like this padding is not working depending on how big this uh, the, the, the stream gets, the actual text gets. So um, we're going to come back in here. And basically, uh, what I want to show is, am I zoomed in? Yep, I sure am. What I want to show is, uh, this is not new to After Effects in this year, but nobody has really been talking about it. And so, um, one of the things that happened in 16.0, I think it was like NAB last year, or the year, or the Max before, is that we changed our expressions engine to be based on JavaScript to allow for yes. more modern, modern, quicker, coding and language. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I love about the After Effects community is that everyone shares their knowledge. There's a big Skillshare community. So, you know, the way that I've been powering through expressions for the last eight or nine years has really just been by copying and pasting things that I find um, <laughs> Dan Ebert tells me or EC Abrams or, uh, I mean, Andrew Kramer, like you name it, there's always someone with a solution. Um, the thing about expressions though, is that they can get really unwieldy and it gets really difficult to, um, you know, if you need to make some updates, 
in order to do something like source rect at time and be able to like make this whole thing dynamic, there's like 85 different places that you have to connect and, and you have to update and if any changes are made. And so uh, one of my really brilliant coworkers who I admire and, and I just learn from so much every day, John Colombo, uh, has recently introduced me into this notion of using a JSX file. So, um, Basically. And hey, Dacia, can I get you yeah. to uh, make the uh, the app fill your screen there because we're seeing kind of the oh, edges yeah. of your yeah, yeah, of your yeah. beautiful background. I can do that. There we go. All right, um, nice, okay. Perfect. So basically, since we introduced this JavaScript uh, engine, you can and and when I say you, I mean the more advanced uh, users can create and then share just like you've shared other things before. Um, you can create uh, basically a JSX file, which means that you've got all the code written in one single source and you're creating functions that you only need to call once. And a good example of this is like wiggle or loop out. For those of you that have used wiggle in, in After Effects, you know, wiggle's actually a lot of code under the hood. But for us, we just have to type in wiggle. And this kind of uh, creates the same sort of scenario. So in this situation, uh, when you have a JSX file, let me just make sure do this and then pull up the expressions. Um, so in order to make all of things, all these things connect, all I had to do was, uh, let's go to the inner border. Okay, all I had to do was connect uh, this size of this inner border to my JSX file. Let me zoom in there. So in the JSX file, there's something called auto scale at time. So I'm saying, hey, I want you to auto scale to the word title. So every time title changes, I want you to change with it. And uh, I want you to uh, not scale proportionally. And that's because all this information is basically in this file here. Um, it makes it a lot faster for After Effects to do all this computational stuff. Um, and then what I ended up doing, since we got in that weird state where the if the text was too long, the pa everything got out of whack, I just made the padding, I connected them to these sliders. So now, if we go back to Premiere and we use this one, and I make this say, filthy animals, um, and everything gets a little bit out of whack, not as bad. Uh, I also have these sliders here where I can just manually adjust until it looks good to to me. Um, but yeah, basically this is something we're going to be talking about more and creating some blog posts around. Um, but it's a faster way to work. It's going to make your mogurts a lot faster. I think this will be exciting for those of y'all who, who do use a lot of expressions in your work. Um, and I'm really excited. And, and honestly, like I, this is the first true dynamic Mogurt that I've ever created because using things like source rect at time has always broken my brain and I've never got it to work right. So what I'm excited about is that introducing something like this can really help bridge the gap towards from the, again, let's bridge the experts knowledge to those of us that are a little bit more intermediate, right. you know, we've been dipping our toes, but now we can, we can play in a, in a whole new ball game. It's faster to create. It's faster it's more performative in Premiere. Um, right. So just shout out John Colombo. We're going to have more of that coming uh, along the way. And I'm so, really hey, excited. I was going to ask you if you could go back to Premiere for a sec, because this yeah. is also just one of the things I wanted to highlight. And uh, we get asked this a lot. I know I do on my daily streams. You know, people will say, well, how do I necessarily know if a Mogurt has been created in After Effects. Granted, we have the info button, but not everybody sees that if they're looking through Adobe right. stock or something. That's right. So, and this is kind of the perfect illustration because before you were talking about how in the EGP, when you're editing, you can get a bit cumbersome. The big differentiator here is that when you bring in an After Effects Mogurt, the editing is done directly here as you see in the EGP. Whereas with Premiere based ones, you can edit inside the effects controls panel. You can, you kind of have different options. That's right. Uh, and it's, and I actually, we cleaned up the way they appear um, in, uh, when you're making Mogurts and how they appear in Premiere as well, right? Cause now you have like the commenting fields and you can, you can organize things. Um, it just, it's a, it's a different look, but a cleaner look as well. 
Yeah, you know, the thing is, is with After Effects ones, the UI is going to depend on what the creator right. sets up for you and how they organize it, you know. And stock is a really good way to learn, so I do want to shout that out. Like, if you go to Adobe, Adobe Stock, you can go uh, find free Mogurts right away, and they're a really great way to learn uh, kind of what's possible. These are going to be the kind of Mogurts that, oh, come on. Uh, these are going to be the kind of mogurts that are not going to allow me to add them to this timeline at the moment, but they're going to have a lot of controls. They're going to have a lot of things, and they're a great learning, uh, a, a great learning tool as well. Um, so that's that's something I always love to tell to tell people. Um, and you know, I was going to ask you. Now I don't know if you have any mogurts. Uh, After Effects created Mogurts saved locally, but this is something else that gets asked all the time. And there are a couple of people asking here in the chat. So you also have the option and it's a little, I, I don't know that it's so much as hidden as just that it's not the, in, I certainly talk about it, but the info isn't kind of obvious that if you have a Mogurt, you can reopen and reveal, because you're talking about sort of learning how things are built. You can That's reopen great. Mogurts and After Effects, but the key to it is you're not importing, you're opening them as a project. I think that's right. where people get a little lost. Yeah, so that you've got to do a file open. So one thing to do, uh, there is a motion graphics templates folder that is hidden deep in your in your system. Or if you were just to download it from the stock website, you could download it to a place that's really easy to find, like your downloads. Uh, and then you open up After Effects, and then all you have to do is do uh, file open project. Yeah. And uh, let's see if I can find one real quick. And if not, I've got a couple loaded up here if you're let's searching. Let's try this one. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask you where do you want to extract it from? Because right. the thing is, is that this Moger that's shareable via email, via Slack, via Creative Cloud Libraries, it's like this little container. It's got the After Effects project and any related media inside of it. And so all it wants to know is where do you want me to like put those things so that we can reference them? Um, and, you know, I'll just say that. And uh, and then pretty soon you've got the After Effects project. Boom, boom, boom. And this is a really killer way to see like how are things being made? I, I learn a lot from this for yeah. sure. Totally. Uh, and and this is something you can do are. even with the free ones from stock, like you Absolutely. said. if you. There's some amazing stuff from like Andrew Kramer and some of really the top. Uh, Wave, you know, Wave Break Media is one right. of my favorite. I mean, right. they make some really fun stuff that's very like retro 80s and 90s. Like they're always just bringing it. And I, right. yeah, I really like them. And uh, the nerd in me always wants to know how did they, how did they achieve that look? Like you see tons of them now with kind of the, the glitch. So again, it's kind of taking that step from the 80s, 90s retro. Now you're kind of seeing that glitchy RGB sort of thing. It's almost getting yeah, a bit over. And it. they're doing it natively in AE. Natively, right, right. Since, since it's on stock, they're not, uh, the stock creators are not allowed to use third-party apps. Right. And, you know, that's one of the things a lot of people ask. Not everyone can afford a bunch of extra scripts, tools, yeah. and plugins. Um, and so I think it's a it's a, an awesome learning opportunity to see, like, how you just do it in AE natively, right. you know? And that is worth mentioning, too. Um, so with regard to both fonts and plugins, you can still build Mogurts that use fonts outside of Adobe Fonts. Of course, the benefit with Adobe Fonts is that if you don't have that font installed or your collaborator doesn't have it installed, if it's an Adobe font, you'll get a message. Actually, you'll see a little box, a, a, a triangle with an exclamation telling you you don't have the font licensed. It will do the licensing for you upon, you know, upon download or licensing the Mogurt, and you're good to go. It'll always display properly. You can still use third-party fonts, but it just means that whomever you're sharing or collaborating with, they must have that font. Otherwise, Premiere will display it, but you won't be able to edit it in that right. font. And the same goes for effects. If you're using some of your favorite third-party uh, After Effects plugins, you know, uh, trap code shine, something like that, whatever it is, and you build a Mogurt with that, you can share that with others, but they have to have that plugin installed. Otherwise, it's just exactly. not going to display properly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, in my, in my, uh, what do we yeah, call we've it? Got, we've got like five minutes. In my overtime, I just want to shout this other really cool thing out, especially because there's a blog post that the really rad folks over at the stock team, Teresa and Nick, uh, they put together sort of like a starter kit. Um, so one of the things that's been uh, notorious to After Effects is that uh, font props, uh, text properties were not something that you could 
views and expressions. In other words, I couldn't tell this text layer to do anything other than grab the actual text from that text layer, but I couldn't send over the font or uh, the color or whatever. And so that got added uh, in 17.0 and it's really rad. So one of the things that I, I don't know, I love the, sh the, the new Queer Eye on Netflix. And so I sort of took this as an opportunity to make something. We also added something called drop down uh, drop down menus. And so this is a little bit more advanced. I'm going to go into the project too to show what's going on. But basically, you know, I kind of tried to do that like, you know, CMYK thing that they do in the intro of, uh, of, of Queer Eye. Uh, but I did it with my pets instead because <laughs> they're real cute. Um, Using Jonathan, whom I often get compared to for some reason. Uh, Oh, so so charming, charismatic. Maybe, maybe it's the charisma. Yeah, we I mean, we have a similar look, you know. And I did do I did do my black and white hair flip on my Twitter page to kind of I was kind of I saw it. From him, I saw so. that flip. And I'm I a fan. Him. Not gonna lie to you, I love him. He's amazing. You know. He's amazing. Yeah, he is. He is. So so here we have uh you know this is for the again the the putting the bumpers you know the stock moguls are gonna make you, let you do whatever whatever you want. These are putting bumpers in. Here I've got uh, I've got what the, uh, one of our new expression controls, which is a drop down control. I've said to the editor, you can have four choices of font. You can do Vortis, you can do Continuo, you can do Amboy, or you can do Acer Bat. But that's it. You can't do anything else. I've also set up some color themes. There are different color themes going on here. So if I kind of scroll out, you can see there. You know, there are basically four different uh, color themes that have gone out. I really like the neon though. I've also said, hey, you know, we can change the font sizes on both the title and um, and and the subtitle here. And and then I've added some controls to be able to move these depending on where the shot is. You know, you can move it around. So here's more of a, a final version of that. Got Olivia, great at grooming. We've got Sam. Such a surfer, you know, and then we've got Bodie. He's just living his best life every day. That's all he can do, you know. Um, so let's go into After Effects real quick. Boom. And there's a lot going on in here. This is a very complicated expressions uh, situation. But the biggest part about this, I'm going to just, you can always right click on a control to reveal it in the timeline. Um, so we have all these drop down controls and we basically, what we did in these pre comps is I have this primary, this is the primary text layer, the pink one, and the other three are all looking at, uh, are all looking at it. So they're getting their style and their, their source text in this case from the, the ones to the, the one source. So you got a source, which is your text and then every, everything else that follows it. Uh, and then we also, of course, are using uh, these other expressions here to drive uh, the the drop down menus. You know the limitations around font size, around color themes, around uh, uh, what else? Font, font size, and color themes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you can do a lot of really fun stuff now. Uh, I know, you know, it is in vogue to see a lot of texts and things that are echoing and animating <laughs> in different ways. Now you can really easily just shoot the one information to all the other text layers and just drive from there. Uh, lastly, I'll just show. And oh, one more. All right. La last thing, because we are just yeah. about out of time. There's this really great blog here to get you started. And so you can you can uh, start understanding how that those relationships work and, and just start playing. And uh, hopefully you'll be making magic in no time. And we can get uh, one of our mods to go place that link in the chat for us. Dacia, this has been so awesome having you. And it's funny, people are like, I'm watching, reading this. There's a lot of questions that are being answered by all of our lovely Adobe people in the chat as well. Thank but you. so many, so many people are saying you're kind of blowing my mind with all of these things and saying things like, I didn't know stock mogrits were customizable. I didn't know you could open mogrits after the fact. I didn't know there was a difference between the Premiere and After Effects mogrits. I mean, this is exactly why we're doing this. This is exactly what these streams are all about. You can catch them every day, but this is special because you've got all these Adobe people here to talk to you. We are listening. 
We are here. We are listening. We are here. We are here. We are here. I was just watching. And we love movie. you. And like, we want to make yes. life easier. We really do. I know yes. sometimes it feels like, why is this so hard? But like, we're working <laughs> really hard to try to make things less hard and get, you know, the tool, help your creativity versus get in the way of it. And that's, that's our goals. That's that the is the star. You that know? is the goal indeed. So again, Dacia, thank you so much you for, for joining me. Now, coming up in approximately 19 minutes, we've got Eric Demusi, who's going to be showing some incredible After Effects compositing and how he did this compositing work um, in both After Effects and Premiere. You definitely want to check that out. I, I mentioned at the top of the hour here, it, it, crazy stuff. I mean, the stuff that Dossie just showed you, incredibly inspirational for getting into MoGraph. If you're thinking about compositing and sort of like high-end film workflow on a budget, the stuff Eric's going to show you next is, it's awesome. it's crazy. So again, thank you so much for joining. We'll be back in approximately 19 minutes. So stick around or come back in at 1030 Pacific time. And until then, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are day, in the world. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>